There are many reasons why Dan Hurley opted to remain at UConn rather than making the jump to the NBA with the Lakers. But make no mistake, a big reason is that the Lakers job just isn't as good as advertised. By now you've probably heard about how Hurley's sideline temperament and antics won't play in the association. In addition, a college coach of Hurley's championship pedigree enjoys a measure of control over a program and authority over players that he could simply never enjoy as an NBA bench boss. Successful college programs often become cults of personality built around their high profile head coaches and Connecticut under Hurley is no different. Enjoying such status at the most successful basketball school of the 21st century surely played into Hurley's decision on some level. But let's face facts, the Lakers gig isn't what it used to be. As I've detailed in multiple episodes over the years, under Jeannie Buss and Rob Palinka's leadership, the Lakers brand has lost some of its luster. Whether it's the people they empower and entrust, or the rosters they've constructed around their stars, the Lakers have spent much of the last decade operating the way the league's perennial losers usually do. The only things separating the Lakers from those losers we mercilessly clown are palm trees and Hollywood the glitz and glamour of LA. And everything's better in LA. What, never met one of them before? It's all they talk about. That pull of Southern California and the team's gilded history still count for something. And that's an inherent advantage the Lakers will always have. It's why LeBron James wanted to be in LA wearing purple and gold for the home stretch of his career, why Anthony Davis followed him there, and why the Lakers are an underrated threat to trade for a star like Donovan Mitchell this summer. But Hurley's smart enough to understand all of that, and yet he's prepping for another season in the Big East right now rather than sunbathing on Venice Beach. That speaks volumes, though it shouldn't be surprising. Hurley already has one of the safest and most prestigious coaching jobs in American basketball, and he can likely command a more lucrative payday with NBA interests now well documented. He'll also be gunning for a third straight NCAA title, something only John Wooden's UCLA squads accomplished more than a half century ago. Compare that to the uncertainty the Lakers job brings. First and foremost, there's LeBron's immediate future. And even if King James decides he wants to ride it out in LA, he's not going to play forever, despite what his greatness might fool us into believing. In the meantime, the Lakers remain hostages to LeBron's whims, Sooner or later, the franchise will be turned over to AD. Though he did play a career-high 76 games this season, Davis is an injury-prone 31-year-old who's never been the best player on a contending team. All of this uncertainty is on the plate of a front office looking for a fourth head coach in seven years and an ownership group that isn't on the same financial planet as the growing list of multi-billionaire owners who now call the NBA their playground. It's all very reminiscent of Coach K turning the Lakers down to remain at Duke in 2004, when LA was coming off four finals appearances in five years, but was also about to trade Shaquille O'Neal and embark on a Kobe-led era that didn't see a playoff series victory for another four years. Like Coach K then, Hurley can see the writing on the wall, no matter how many generic compliments he pays the Lakers. Bus, Palinka, and Lakers Nation can come up with all the excuses they want to explain Hurley's rejection. Some of those excuses might even be valid. But the overarching truth here for the Lakers is he's just not that into you. Can you blame him? Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.